Wilhelm Steins. We're gonna look at a game in which he played five brilliant moves. Let's go. The game started off with an Italian game. The best opening if you're a chess beginner. So, so simple to play. And after bishop c5, c3, it transposed into g piano. And after knight f6, white can play this position in two ways. Either he can play d3 or maybe try for d4. In the game, he went d4. Takes, takes, black gives a check and after knight blocks it, there are two ways to play this position. The current most modern theory is to take the pawn on e4, white will castle and then you take the knight. And the game goes on by taking the bishop, black plays d5 and it's a mess. But in the game, black decided to go d5 immediately. And after white took, black recaptured and he simply castled. And now in this position, if black is greedy and he tries to chop off the knight and take the pawn that immediately backfires because white has queen check double attacking the king and knight and winning a free piece knight takes knight also does not work you simply take back bishop takes pawn it looks like he wins the pawn also attacks the rook but here white has a very nice idea to move the queen to b3 let the rook die because in the end he gets f7 king moves then the bishop slides to a3 and after knight blocks it the rook goes to even all the white pieces are on the attack there's no way to save the knight and this is completely crushing black did not care about the knight and simply continued developing here white had the opportunity to go rook here and after a normal looking move like castle he could have continued with knight g5 putting pressure on this bishop if black takes the knight you do not recapture but play an intermediate move queen here attacking the knight also threatening a mate in one h7 black defends it then you take off the bishop you take the knight you attack the bishop you're winning this pawn king is weak you have the bishop pair white is so much better here but he did not spot rookie one idea instead he went for bishop g5 and in this position black made a mistake he should have moved the queen to d7 but instead he played bishop here looks very normal i come back block out the attack but there is a problem here white needs to exploit the fact the king has not castled you might say it's just one move away from castle how can he do it the move that was played was bishop takes knight doesn't seem much he'll be like okay i can take this bishop or maybe take that bishop what if i take this one what's going on you will not recapture this bishop but first take on e6 making black take the bishop with the pawn and now this pawn is super duper weak. You can go rook here and just attack it out. But there is a better move. And that is to push d5. Break open the center. The king is still in the center. Exploit the fact. After black takes the pawn, you slide in the rook, giving a check. If king goes to f8, you simply take the pawn. And look at this. King cannot castle. He's on f8. Your rook is so happy. Knight is so happy. White is dominating. And if black tries to block it with the bishop, that does not work. You can still take Take the pawn and this king can never castle the pressure on this bishop is too much if he castles he immediately loses the game chop off the bishop take the queen and win the knight that is why in this position bishop takes knight is very annoying to deal with in the game he decided not to take the g5 bishop but take the d5 bishop but that did not help white simply took back the bishop and again black what to do? Do you take this knight or do you take this bishop? If you take the bishop, white has two choices. The simpler one is to simply take on c7, an intermediate move, sacrificing the knight and you win the pawn and you're happy. But a better way is to give a rook check first. Moving the king is never a good option, so he has to block it. And then you chop off the bishop and then play queen e2. The knight is under fire. He can never castle, the knight gets chopped off. This king is gonna stay in center and you can squeeze him out. So in the game, instead of taking this bishop, he decided to simply take the knight. But that did not help him at all. White took the bishop and brought in the rook. The knight is pinned again. No castling for you. If the black queen goes back, hoping for a castle, again, queen e2 comes in. No running away for the king. So black tried f6. And after queen e2, he simply went back, saved the knight and hoping one day he'll get to f7. Maybe the rook gets out and he gets to go to g8. White continued applying pressure. He played rook c1. Looking at this c7 pawn, this was the golden opportunity for black to come back in the game. He should have. He should have played king f7. And after queen check, simply block it out. The rook will come into the play 
and you're fine. And if White tries to re-rotate the knight, that does not help. Rook e8 is in time. Knight e4, knight comes back. The black king is safe. The knight is out and he's fine. In this moment, he did not realize the importance of king f7. He was too slow. He played c6. Now time for you to shine. Can you find White's next move? You have no time to waste. Do not go rook here, rook here, tripling it up. Too slow. This time, he will get king f6. You need to rush it. The rooks love open file. Break it open. d5. Now king f7 is too late because you can simply take on c6. Give a check. This pawn is weak. Rook is not in time. King is going nowhere. It's doomed. So black took the pawn and white continued with knight d4. The knight is ready to hop in. Maybe even go to f5. Threaten the pressure on this knight. Or maybe go to e6. Help out the rook to c7. All kind of threats are coming along. If black tries g6, trying to prevent knight here, that that does not work because the knight can go to b5 now. Now knight c7 is coming, winning the rook. Also rook c7 is coming, winning the knight. Too many threats. Bye bye king. So black tried king f7. Too late. But it is what it is. And white continued with knight e6. The knight is there. Time for the rook to go to c7. Maybe sacrifice the knight on g7 and win this knight back. Tactics are flowing. If black plays g6 trying to save the pawn. Rook c7. Queen d6 does not help because knight checks. Sacrifice it. Rook takes and the king is cornered. The queen can go to d3, d4. Look for a mate. Or maybe go rook c1, rook c7. Double it up. All the pieces are stuck. Black cannot survive this. So g6 is out of the question. Moving the knight does not help. White has knight here, attacking the queen and simply winning b7. Also, the knight is under attack. Knight here is coming. This is not looking good. So in the game, he tried rook c8. Hoping he could trade off some rooks, ease up the pressure. White continued to find good moves after good moves. He played queen g4. Simple idea. Double attack g7. Look for some disco. Maybe Maybe win a queen. A normal looking move like knight g6 is game over. You give a check and you win the queen. Black could not let this pawn die, so he pushed it. And now we have reached the best moment of this game. Time for you to pause the video and figure out what did white play here. White started off with knight check. Disco attack. Cannot take the knight, the queen falls off. King e8, only move protecting the queen. And now is the time for the brilliant sacrifice. Rook takes knight, sacrificing the knight. You'd be surprised to know. Queen takes rook, king takes rook everything is bad he cannot take it if he takes the rook with the queen you chop off the rook you win the rook and your knight up and completely winning if he takes the rook with the king you slide in the rook give a check where should the king go or to d8 a knight check a discovered check you win the queen you win the game and if he tries to go to d6 that does not help queen check from b4 block it with the rook rook check and you chop off the rook if the king tries to run into c7, another check. I don't be it, another check. Rook blocks it, you take the rook and a back rank mate. So in this position, queen takes rook, king takes rook, does not work. The best move in this position is to play king f8. And now, don't be dumb and take this queen by the queen or rook because there is a back rank from black. It's not so simple. You can't go grabbing. And here white played another brilliant move. Rook f8. Same idea. Cannot take the rook. Rook takes rook, strikes again, and you win the rook. Going back to e8 does not help. This time, you can take the queen and some mate in one. So he had to go to g8. You see where the mad rook is going. Next move should be easy. Don't tell me you said take the queen. There's still a back rank on c1. Don't be greedy. The move is rook g7. And nether rook sacrifice. Again, he cannot take with the queen. Rook takes rook is always there. So annoying. And if he takes the rook with the king, now you can take the queen because this time capturing the queen gives a check. Wherever the king goes, you give a check, you win the rook and you're chilling. So where should the king go? Back to f8 or h8? If you go to f8, now white can take the h7 pawn. Remember, he cannot go there. Queen takes queen is a mate. So now he's forced to take the rook. You simply take a queen and now 
this rook is dying and it's game over. So black cannot take the rook with the king and the queen and cannot go to f8. So sadly, he went to h8. And now what do you do? This one should be easy. You saw e7, f7, g7. What's left? Rook g7. Another sacrifice. The black queen is so sad. Can never take it. Rook takes stroke is forever there. So the king went to g8. Now what to do? You gave a check here, you got a knight. You gave a check here, got nothing but push the king. You got another check here, got nothing but push the king. You got another check here, this time you won a pawn and now you pushed him back. Now what? Go back with one more check? Yes. Rook g7, another check on this side, another sacrifice. What is this mad rook doing? Maybe I go back to h8, if he repeats, it's a draw but no this time the h7 pawn is missing white can give a check with the queen black is forced to take the rook and the queen is in king f8 remember do not eat up the queen you will just lose the game so give a check another check where should the king go if the king goes to d6 queen takes pawn and a mate king goes to e8 another check another check pushing the king can't go to d6 goes to e8 does not help queen check knight check another mate no running for mr king so king h8 is doomed queen h4 is coming okay let's go to f8 if he repeats i'm happy with the draw there we go to f8 give me a check this time you give a check by the knight king goes here you chop off the queen the black king is forced to take the rook you take the queen you win the rook and you win the game so in this position white sacrifice the rook on e7 and then on f7 and then on g7 and then on h7 and then at the last g7 again the mad rook won the game